everybody. It is Monday, May 21st, and we're back. Uh, I didn't play at all over the weekend, so I don't have too much to talk about from uh, how the weekend went perspective. What about you, Jake? You play at all this weekend? Yeah, I played a little bit on Saturday. Took Sunday completely off. It was glorious. Uh, didn't have any content to do, so I'm refreshed and I'm ready to go. Um, yeah, this looks like a good slate. So I like it a I'm lot. Kind of pumped. Yeah, we were talking a bit, Mitch, or uh, before show, and it was. Uh, I think we're on the same page. So sounds like it should be a good show. Let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first game up, my Braves uh, at the Phillies. Four four run implied total for the Braves. Four point five for the Phillies. It's a fifty four percent chance to win. Um, for the Phils, uh, Mike fulton going for Atlanta, Nick Pavetta going for Philadelphia. Uh, I'm not really looking at either of these guys. Um, I just feel like there are better options basically right next to them in abundance. So I don't have a huge problem with them. Like, I prefer Pavetta. Uh, you know, the Braves' four-run implied total isn't too high. Um, so I'll end up with maybe a line or two of Pavetta, but I don't expect to have much of these two guys. Uh, I assume you'll have a little of Pavetta if you were playing mass lineups. Yeah, if I'm mass entering, then Pavetta's for sure a guy I'd, I'd have in. Um, he comes up as one of the best pitchers, like for me just in general, to play on this slate. And I think maybe the best, but then you factor in the matchup and then He's, he's no longer the best for me. The Braves are really tough. It's only a four-run total for them, so there's a lot of respect for Pavetta on Vegas' side. Like, I think he can get some strikeouts here. I'm just worried about some of the lefty power for the Braves with all these. And Freeman, Marcakis just has not struck out at all this year. Uh, it's, it's really weird. Like, he's just been awesome. Um, Suzuki doesn't really strike out, and Enciarte... Like, I don't know. I'm just, like, I like Pavetta. I just, like you said, there are other pitchers right around his price that I like a little bit better. Yeah, but uh, the Braves just, I mean, they've got a, a 20% K rate against righties this year. League average is 23, so they're, you know, significantly under that. Um, I like both pitchers up, so, like, they both have the high end where if the game breaks the right way, they, they have a really big game. But I just don't necessarily trust it compared to everything else that I see on the board. This game's actually... People will be people won't be shocked, but like I'm, I'm on nothing here. The most ownership I have to anyone is either Pavetta at 2% on DK or Freeman at 2% on FanDuel. Everything else is just ones and zeros. So this game is interesting to me from like a personal perspective, but... I'm not really looking at anybody on either side. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really either. Like, I probably won't end up with someone. If I just make one lineup tonight, I probably won't end up with someone on either side of this game. I would, I get going to Freeman or Marcakis or Albies as, like, a one-off. And then on the other side, Oduble's just been raking. Yeah. 4800 for him on DK. Like, he's earned that price. Carlos Santana, same thing, 4300 those are two guys that I like. Um, Fulte is coming. Have you seen like the numbers on his last start? I didn't watch the start, but he had no. five innings, 10 Ks, no earned yeah. runs, and five walks. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> and then he didn't get like any swinging strikes or chases. Yeah, it's, it, it's it, a, that's a weird game. Yeah. So I don't know what happened there. Like He must have just been getting a bunch of called third strikes and stuff like that, but... Um, so I'm not buying into him being like a huge strikeout pitcher or anything. Like he could definitely have a good start here against Philadelphia. That's why I'm off both sides pretty much. Yeah. Um, no, I'm with you there. Uh, I, it's just there are much better hitting options and there are – both pitchers are good in this scenario. It's just not like they're not good for fantasy in this particular slate. That's where I'm at. Yep. Like, if somebody was like, I really like Nick Pavetta tonight, I wouldn't put up much of a fight for it. Me too. Alrighty. Padres and Nats. Uh, Padres, 3.2 run implied total. 
Nats 4.3. It's a 63% chance to win for the Nats. Um, Robbie Erlin going for San Diego. Gio Gonzalez going for Washington. Uh, I liked Gio a little bit more on DK last night. I'm not sure I feel the same way now, but it's not going to matter much. I'm going to have a lot of exposure to him. Uh, I think Gio looks really good as the second most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. Um, I'll have, I would expect Gio to hit my ownership cap uh, for the day. So he's a guy that I'm definitely going to have uh, a decent amount of. Just no real respect for the Padres. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a ton of respect for the Padres either. On DK, Gio is almost 12,000. Yeah, that one's so tough. he's. Yeah, he's not going to be on my radar. I just don't think he has huge upside, and I'd probably go to Cranky if I had to go up in that price range. Ooh, okay. So I would go, I would go Geo over Cranky, but okay, I mean, that's, that's basically a coin flip. I'm going to have a lot yeah. of both of them just because I need to spend the salary. Yeah, that's fair too. Like he's going to be pretty contrarian on DK, and he could definitely have a good start here. I'm not super scared of the Padres. They are getting Perella, or they they have gotten Perella and Villanueva back recently. So they are a little bit better against lefties. That's probably going to be enough to keep me off Geo. And then I'm not I'm not really targeting any San Diego bats. What do you think about Erlin? He's I mean he, he was just good pitched in that last a couple start, days right? ago. Yeah, he just pitched a couple of days ago, I think though. So I think he was really good. Like I think I targeted against him last time, and he threw a gem. That could have been two games ago, and I, I might be wrong. Let's see. I thought I had this. Like, he hasn't made a start. Wait. Uh, he he made one start. Er, Robbie Erlin. So, he made one start on the 16th of April. Yeah, I and lost here now. Yeah, he went three innings, got pounded, it looks like. Hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, he looks... Yeah, he, he looks like a decent reliever to me. Um, but the Nats won't have to go up for against him for long. No. And... I like Rendon and Matt Adams and Bryce Harper is probably going to be contrarian because people are going to see lefty lefty or maybe he won't be as owned as he should be. I like this Nats stack for sure. Even Michael Taylor for 2,900. Yeah. So the Nats are one of the uh, spotlight stacks for today. Um, I have, they're my fifth most owned stack on FanDuel and my number two on DK. So lots of Turner, Rendon, Mark Reynolds. Um, I don't obviously have to say too much about Bryce Harper. Uh, I'm hoping his ownership is relatively low because of the matchup. Uh, I get a lot of Michael Taylor on both sites. Not a lot of Matt Adams. Um, I just don't love the price, the matchup, and sort of the spot in the lineup. And I get a lot of Severino on DK as a catcher to go with the stack. So I'll be pretty heavy on the Nats uh, just across the board. Yeah, they're just they're really affordable too, and it's going to be a bullpen yeah. game for San Diego. So give me some of the Nats for sure here. Yeah, like Rendon for thirty eight hundred on DK, man, that's a super duper cheap price. He's one of the spotlight hitters. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, me too. And I'm not looking at any Padres, so it's basically just all Nats hitting, pitching. I'm in for both of them. I think that people will. I think Green or uh, Geo's ownership will be kind of hot like not high in that he'll be chalky but i think he's gonna naturally get paid up to um because a lot of the stacks that i'm seeing today are relatively cheap so the money is there to fill out and go to geo or grinky plus whoever okay yeah that makes sense i hope so I'm wrong. probably like, a little... i hope geo's at like eight or something stupid but i expect it to be i ex like i think he's gonna get paid for tonight yeah, on DK, if he's above like fifteen or like fifteen or so, I'd be pretty surprised. But really, yeah, okay, yeah, man. I just, I don't know. I mean, it is a really good run total against him. So the people that weigh Vegas more into their models will probably be on Geo a little bit more. Uh, I, I'm not going to be on Geo though. I just see a, such a clear delineation between guys that are playable tonight and guys that aren't. That Agreed. You have to fill up like that you know, 200% of exposure for pitcher somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so either it's either going to be like a guy like 
Bueller is way higher than I ever expected, mm. or it's going to spread out a little higher. And I, I'm, I'm expecting it to spread out a little higher, but we'll find out around 1 o'clock or whenever we drop our ownership projections. Yeah. Good plug. Yeah. You can only get those uh, via Osmo.com premium memberships. Highly there recommend getting that. There it is. Marlins and Mets. Uh, Marlins with a 4.1 run implied total. Mets 4.7. It's a 55% chance to win for the Mets. Elysier Hernandez going for Miami. Jason Vargas going for the Mets. Uh, you want to go ahead and not have either of these guys, I would imagine. Although, I don't know. I guess you could roll dice on Vargas against the Marlins, but I wouldn't be. it wouldn't be like my first choice in the world. Uh, I have very little of this game. Maybe like a couple lines of Mets on FanDuel, one or two lines of Mets on DK, but uh, this one's mostly a stay away for me. Yeah, I'm not on either of the pitchers here. I wonder if Vargas will get ownership just because he is a favorite for 4,600. Um, he's looked really bad, though. Yeah. Like he has missed a few bats here and there. Swinging strike rate is all right. But the Marlins have some guys that can really hit lefties well. Specifically, one guy that I love tonight is Brian Anderson. Uh, third base and outfield eligible. He has a 15% K rate, 423 on base percentage, 62% hard hit rate, and 200 ISO against left-handed pitching this year. And like I said, dual position eligibility. Vargas has just been getting lit up by righties. And I don't think he's going to be highly owned just because... He's not really a big name, but that's a really good price for someone who has those kind of numbers. And then I like Real Muto and Castro against Vargas, too. So I'm hoping Vargas is a little bit more chalky than I'm initially thinking, or that we're thinking. Um, do you like any Mets bats or any of those Marlins I mentioned? Um, like, if I didn't know it, like, in a vacuum, I don't mind some of the Marlins guys. You know, Real Muto, Castro, Brian Anderson. I don't I don't have a huge problem with it. I think their projections are fine for their price points. Mm. Uh, there's just way too many other stacks out there that I would prioritize over them. So I'm not going to end up with any Marlins. Um, they're probably, depending on what Vargas' ownership gets to, which I'm not expecting more than like 3% or so. But if it, if it got squirrely and got high, then... I think a Marlin, an, an anti Marlin, or an anti Vargas stack would be feasible. Uh, Wilmer Flores is only 2,300 on FanDuel, 2,800 on DK, dual eligibility. So I think he grades out kind of nice. Um, Jay Bruce, I guess, would be worth like a one off flyer if you need a lefty righty matchup and a guy that could hit a home run. But I'm, I'm like, Wilmer Flores got 7% exposure for me on FanDuel. That's the highest of anything in this game. Uh, everybody else is in like the one, two, three, four range. So it's a couple lines of Mets and that's basically it. It's just not the spot for me. Yeah, Conforto's kind of woken up recently. So he was the one guy that I like against Hernandez. Okay. And then Bruce is also super cheap. He's hitting a little bit better. Um, my boy is Drew Cabrera, 3,600. Yeah. Like those are all guys that I like, but... It's more in like a one-off scenario. I think Hernandez is okay. Not looking to play him, though. I would like the Mets a little bit more if there were like two less games. Yeah. There are a lot more options that I think are better than them as far as stacks go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we good? Anything else here? I think we're good. Got my Brian Anderson love in there. so <laughs> There you go. I actually read Brian Anderson's name in a different article this morning. <laughs> I was surprised because I was like, shit, I'm, I'm almost positive I have no Marlins. So I should take a look at this. Uh, Diamondbacks and Brewers. Diamondbacks, 4.3 run implied total. Brewers, 3.9. It's a 54% chance to win for the Diamondbacks. Zach Greinke going for Arizona. Chase Anderson going for Milwaukee. Um, I'll have some Greinke. I hope that I'm under the field because I don't really want to pay up for him all that much. But, you know, he clearly has one of the better opportunities to be the top pitcher of the slate. What I'm really looking at here is uh, this is going to be this is going to run contrary to everything that I should like. I really like the Diamondback stack. Uh, I have them third most on FanDuel, uh, sixth most on DK, but they're a ginormous fall off after the Diamondbacks. So, um I like them. I like the Diamondbacks on both sites. 
I oddly like Chase Anderson on DraftKings, which doesn't jive usually with having so much D-backs, but I'm going to have both sides of this game, at least on DraftKings. Uh, I'm assuming you're not looking at Chase Anderson at all. No, no, no Chase Anderson for me. I like Lamb and Descalso and Goldschmidt against him a little bit, um, but more as a mini stack or kind of like what I was talking about with the Mets, sort of individually like each of those guys. Granke is probably a little bit overpriced. He's on the road against a Brewers team who's probably a neutral matchup. And then I'm worried about how much hard contact he's given up this year. He just had a pretty good start against the Brewers, but nothing spectacular. And that's kind of what I'm expecting again. So Granke, just, I don't see, it's kind of like Geo. I don't see the huge upside with him. And I think some guys that are priced well below him have a lot higher upside. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I'll have less Grinky than Geo, and I'm basically only getting to Grinky because of filling out salary. So I'm figuring I'll be in and around his ownership, and that's fine for me. Uh, but I love the D-backs, particularly on FanDuel. The Peralta, Owings, Lamb, Goldschmidt, mm-hmm. uh, I love... Um, I'm getting a lot of Jared Dyson because he's super cheap, 2300 on FanDuel, uh, 2900 on DK. So I'm getting these guys quite a bit. I, I expect to get to them just because they're so cheap. Like Peralta's under 3000 on FanDuel. Chris Owings is only 2100 uh, Jake Lamb only 3000 uh, Paul Goldschmidt's... I, I got to stop betting on Paul Goldschmidt to be <laughs> good... He's been not good, and I really need him to start being good. He just hit a home run this weekend, though. Finally. Yeah, I, I was gonna. It was on Saturday, and I was like, I had him as one of my guys. I was gonna write up his spot like hitters, and I uh, chose someone else. And then he he donged, I think, in one of his first at bats. So I was. It's his first home run in a month. I know. I wanted to be on it for his first home run, and. I mean, I he's think hitting in... two oh five on the year. He's slugging three sixty seven. Oh, man. His, like, a- average exit velocity and stuff looks okay, though. So he's probably got a little bit of regression coming positively. Uh, I'm not, like, super worried about Goldschmidt, actually. I just, I can't, like, I can't avoid him. At some point in time, I'm expecting him to break out. Otherwise, this is going to be a long season. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I-, I think he'll bust out of it here pretty soon. I mean, he's slugging 200 points lower than he did last year. <laughs> That's just, that's hard to do. That is not great. I mean, his batting eye is fine. He's still drawing a ton of walks. Like, he's got, you know, for a 205 average, to get to a 323 on base percentage is commendable. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It's just something off for him. Maybe he needs LASIK or something weird. Anyway, <laughs> I'll have a ton of Diamondbacks, uh, particularly those first four, plus Jared Dyson. Oddly, I'm not getting a lot of Descalso, which I would have expected that I did. I don't know if it's it, it's probably just because of Jake Lamb. Um, you know, it's two guys with only third base eligibility. Mm-hmm. Lamb is grading out significantly higher for me than Descalso, so Descalso kind of just falls off. Uh, but am I totally crazy for having some Chase Anderson on DK? I mean, I don't think you're totally crazy. 6,300, like... He's it's basically a pick him here. He's a little bit of a dog. And then the Diamondbacks are a really good matchup against right-handed pitchers in general. So like they have a 25% K rate. They don't hit the ball super hard. Their ISO is bottom 10 in the league. Their on-base percentage is bottom 5 in the league. Yeah. Um so just right-handed pitchers against the Diamondbacks in general I think are pretty good matchups. I don't have a ton of respect for Anderson at least not this year. He hasn't shown the, the same kind of K stuff that he did a little bit during the middle of last year. So I get it. 6,300 is a chance you can definitely take with a few lineups. Yeah, I think I think Anderson is going to be my hedge against being overexposed to Arizona. But we'll see how that all shakes out once lineups finalize. All right, here's another big one for bats. Yankees and Rangers. Yankees 5.3 run implied total. Rangers 3.9. Uh, it's a 64% chance to win for the Yanks. Masahiro Tanaka going for New York. Bartolo Colon uh, going for Texas. I like Tanaka quite a bit here. 
particularly on DraftKings, where I expect him to definitely hit uh, my ownership caps. Uh, depending on where ownership goes on FanDuel, I might bump him up a little bit, but I'm not getting a lot of him on FanDuel. And then uh, from a stack perspective, I have no part of the Rangers. No hitters, no pitcher. Obviously no Bartolo Colon. But uh, hitting-wise, I mean, this is as, as good of a high-end matchup as you're going to get. Um, talk to me about Tanaka, I guess, to start. Yeah, he's probably my favorite pitcher on the night when you factor in price. He, Not that I really look at this, but like, He's probably going to be playing with a lead, or in theory, the Yankees should get to Bartolo Colon pretty early. Um, so I'm like, I love all the Yankees bats, but but who doesn't? It is a risky spot for Tanaka for sure. Just that park, really good hitting weather. It's like mid 80s. Um, some power in the Rangers lineup for sure, but the strikeout stuff is still there for Tanaka. He's got a 13.8% swinging strike rate. Uh, the whiffs are getting back up to where we saw last year. And then the Rangers have the third highest K percentage, fourth worst WRC plus against righties this season. So it, it, it's kind of all lining up for Tanaka. I don't expect him to be perfect. He might give up a home run or two. So don't expect him to be throwing a shutout in this kind of weather. Um, but the strikeouts should definitely be there for him. And if he can go six or seven innings here, he's going to have a huge start. So I'm all over Tanaka. Yeah. Yeah. Um overwhelming amount of exposure for him on DraftKings. It's just going to be really easy to get to him, especially, you know, having to have two uh, two pitchers. Yeah. Their Yankees bats look so good on DK. Like, Gregorius is cheaper on DraftKings than he is on FanDuel. Stanton has the same price. I don't get to Gary Sanchez all that often on FanDuel, but on DK I'll have, like, the maximum amount of Sanchez that I'll get to, so... Just getting those three guys right away is a ton of exposure. And then rotating in basically everybody else on the team, whether it's Gardner, Judge, uh, Hicks, Walker, Andujar. Like, I'm just – I'm going to have a bunch of uh, Yankees on DraftKings. I think they're a much better stack on DraftKings. They're quite overpriced on FanDuel. I'll still get to them, but just not as much. Uh, I've basically not played Aaron Judge all year on FanDuel. He, he just has too high of a price point for me. Yeah, I mean, I love all these all these Yankees bats, really, one through nine. And they're going to be the chalkiest stack of the night, I would think. And they're probably going to be a reason why, like, Gonzalez and Granke won't get super high in ownership because people want to pay up for bats. Yeah. Um, Cologne is kind of just going deep enough where he's frustrating to stack against so far, but... Based on everything I'm seeing, like he's getting lit up by both righties and lefties, probably getting some really, really hard outs. And he doesn't really have the repertoire to miss any Yankees bats. Like He doesn't have a hard slider that's going to break away from the power righties or anything. So they're going to be making contact and great hitting weather. It's just it's too good of a matchup to like just completely fade, in my opinion. So I want Judge, Stanton, Sanchez. I think those are my favorite bats probably in that order. Um, so in the order of how they're priced on DK, but I don't mind Gregorius and Hicks and Andujar all the way down in the eight spot either. How many sliders do you think Bartolo Colon could eat? Oh man. Like from White Castle, this guy is sure, down. Like, you know, like mini cheeseburgers or something. It'd be 20, like 20, a thousand. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say like 2,500, but yeah. you know, I might be a little bit high. Can you imagine how tiny they'd look in his hands? <laughs> Did you see him take one off the gut, like a line drive? I didn't. Yeah, he just like took it off his gut and then picked it up and threw the guy out at first, and like it didn't even phase him. It's like Homer Simpson taking the fucking cannonball to the stomach. That might yeah. be before, too far too far before your time. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I've seen that before. <laughs> oh man, that's. I wish I had. Uh, one of those like super crazy like high frame cameras while it hit him and just see like the reverberations through his body. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry, I don't want to fat shame Bartolo Colon any longer. My bad. To be in the league for twenty years or however long he's been pitching, good for you. No, good for him is right. Um, you know. I mean, it's got to be twenty years, right? Or like super close to that. Oh, I I bet it's twenty. Yeah, he's forty-five. 
Yeah. He just turned 45, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he he is, will uh, be Thursday? Yeah, or yeah, he's, he's just turning 30, 45 or something. Yeah. That's what I heard. I mean, yeah, he started in 1997. When Bartolo Colon, and, and he was 24 then. <laughs> when Bartolo Colon started, this is going to be a really funny answer. When he first got his start, I was in elementary school. It was 1997. 1997. I was a couple years old. <laughs> you've you've seen all of Bartolo Colon's career. I have. Like if you watched a lot of baseball, he could be the guy that you've seen play more than anyone <laughs> from a pitching perspective. Yeah, he's he's kind of the same kind of pitcher he was too. It's not like he has changed a ton. No. Anyway, enough about Bartolo Colon. Yeah, don't play him, by the way. Unless we're <laughs> gonna do like I don't know, fantasy Nathan's hot dog eating contest or something. If you're playing low ball, maybe. Yeah. Orioles and White Sox. Orioles, 4.8 run implied total. White Sox, 4.5. <clears throat> it's a 53% chance to win for the Orioles. Andrew Kashner going for Baltimore. Hector Santiago going for Chicago. Uh, key takeaway here, you're not playing any pitching. And Baltimore is my favorite stack of the day. I think they're number one on DK, number two on Fanduel. Yep. So uh, they're they're my favorite across the board. I love them. I'm gonna have a ton of them. Talk to me about the Orioles. Do you agree? The or yeah, the Orioles are one of my favorites of the night. Santiago's just gonna get eight, nine righties here, and Machado himself, like he's the guy I want to talk about he's probably one of if not the best play on the entire slate he'll be super chalky yeah um even for 5600 at shortstop i think he like based on his position scarcity and all that stuff he's just far and away above i think any other shortstop tonight um after that i like scope and valencia mancini a little bit so i can get to a full Orioles stack against Santiago. On the White Sox side, I do like Moncada and Yomer Sanchez, and then even the really the top four. So Moncada, Sanchez, Abreu, and Davidson. And they're pretty cheap on DraftKings. I don't know how long they're going to be against Kashner, but this is a game where you can just game stack if it makes sense, because I think there's going to be quite a bit of runs on both sides. Yeah, I oddly don't get to any White Sox, particularly on DK. I have a small amount of Moncada, Sanchez, Abreu on FanDuel, but on DK, they're not coming along. It's just an overwhelming amount of Orioles. So, like Trey Mancini, Jones, Machado, Scope is a, a spotlight hitter today. Just He's just too cheap at a second base spot. Um, then Trumbo. I get some Chris Davis on FanDuel. I don't get him at all on DK. Basically, his ownership on FanDuel just gets transitioned to Andrew Susak. If I'm going to be fully stacking the Orioles, I need to get a catcher from somewhere. Um, and then Valencia looks fine, too. Uh, I'm just, without question, they're going to be one of my three highest owned stacks on both sites. They would have to basically swap out the entire lineup right now for that to change. Or stop starting Hector Santiago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love both sides of it. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm right there with you. Like everyone on the Orioles makes sense here, um, and then I like a few of those White Sox, so I'm probably higher on them than you are. Uh, that's really all I got for this game. No pitchers or anything. No, 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 no. Can't be starting either of these guys. Yeah, I don't think I would start them together if I knew that I can get both of their totals combined. <laughs> Man, bad. yeah. They are, they are really bad. They could both go in the negative tonight, and it wouldn't shock me. <laughs> uh, alrighty. Tigers and Twins. Tigers, 3.6 run implied total. Twins, 4.9. It's a 64% chance to win for the Twins. Blaine Hardy going for Detroit. Jose Barrios going for Minnesota. Uh, love Barrios tonight. I expect him to be relatively popular just because of the price point where everything shakes out. Coming mm -hmm. off of... Uh, just an awesome, awesome start in his last time out. Uh, I love Barrios and I love the Twins hitters. Um, what about you, Minnesota Homer? 
Are you all over the Twins? Yeah. No, I'm I'm a Minnesota homer today. That's actually what I have in my notes here. So um, if you want to like look up all the reasons I'm on Barrios, it's in the spotlight pictures, but I'll just name a few. Um, Tigers are just letting <clears throat> everyone get ahead of them. Like they're in the top five in first pitch strike rate. So they're taking pitches, they're getting behind counts, and then they're forced to chase. And if you got good strikeout stuff like Barrios does, then you're probably going to be in favorable counts and you're going to be able to strike out guys like Hicks and Goodrum and McCann and Jacoby Jones for sure. Um, so, like, all these guys besides, like, Leonis Martin and Victor Martinez are over or plus 20% strikeout guys against righties. And Barrios just coming off a really good start. Um, he was, like, 7% last time. And I... I mean, I didn't understand it against a bunch of righties. He's going to get a bunch of righties again. And against a really bad Tigers team. Yeah. Um, and it's just a super weird price for Barrios. So he's he's going to be owned for sure. I wish he was like 10K because I would still be on him a ton and <laughs> he would be a lot less owned. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in the price here. Yeah, like I have him projected with the same overall projection uh as mccullis and mccullis is at 9800 so like yeah. i would easily take barrios at that price because uh, i'm going to take mccullis spoiler alert for the next game we look at um yeah barrios just looks good he looks good on both sides the price point's perfect the tigers aren't somebody i'm worried about i feel like i'm just getting to barrios uh like at the wrong game and he's gonna be <clears throat> like not as good here and he's going to have a ton of ownership. I mean, I would expect him to be one of the more popular guys of the day. 3.6 uh, run implied total for the Tigers is nothing to worry about. He just, he looks good. Um, Twins are my fourth most owned stack on FanDuel, my fifth most owned stack on DK. So it's, it's definitely a team that I'm looking at. Uh, not a lot of respect for Blaine Hardy. Although, to be perfectly honest, I don't know a ton about him. Um... I'm going to, you know, Brian Dozier has been one of the more popular bats over the last two weeks in tournaments. Just been underpriced and, and relatively chalky each night. I don't expect that to change today. So I'll have a bunch of Dozier. Um, it does concern me, you know, getting so much lefty-lefty with this Twins lineup. Uh, but I'll end up with some Kepler and Rosario. Uh, I'll have Eduardo Escobar in a decent amount. You know, I don't get super excited to have Mitch Garver, but he'll be a part of some stacks on DK. And then uh, I really like Byron Buxton at 2100 only on FanDuel, 2800 on DK. Uh, he makes the, the twin stack a lot cheaper. So Buxton is a guy I'm looking at that I don't expect to be super highly owned, but at only $100 more than the minimum on FanDuel with that 4.9 run implied total. If he's in the lineup, he's a guy that I'm going to have a lot of. Yeah, I'm all over the Twins bats, and you kind of alluded to the lefty-lefty stuff. I think, do you, do you think that's going to keep people off of the Twins when you see two of their big bats, uh, Kepler, Rosario, and, well, I guess three, Morrison against a lefty here? Like, do you think that their ownership will be kept down because of that? I think so. It's that combination <clears throat> of, like, it being the Twins, who aren't exactly, like, the most popular team in general. It's not a, like... It's not as if there's a lot of, you know, public sentiment to make sure you get Eddie Rosario in your lineup. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would expect them to be relatively low-owned. I think there are decent litmus tests for figuring out, like, how much people pay attention to that sort of stuff. Because if their ownership is kind of high, that sort of tells us something about the state of the industry. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think they should be pretty highly owned here i yeah. don't think like i think they're going to come in way lower owned than they should um so hardy is like the swing man for the tigers like he's only going to go a few innings so i'm not paying too much attention to the platoon stuff but even if you do um kepler and rosario are crushing lefties this year uh like weirdly crushing them so I'm on both of them. I think they can get to Hardy. And then whatever, if a righty comes in, perfect. You got Eduardo Escobar, who's a switch hitter. Um, Garver's going to get a, an at-bat or two against the lefty. Dozier's going to get an at-bat or two against the lefty. Um, so I, I like the top five for the Twins a ton. And I would even throw in Logan Morrison for 3,500. Yeah. 
Um, Tigers have the fifth worst whip. Their bullpen does. They have the fifth fifth worst whip. Uh, their bottom five in K percentage, bottom five in xFIP. Um, it's just not a very good bullpen behind Hardy. So I am I'm on the Twins. I'm on Barrios. I'm going with the Twins onslaught tonight. I'm with you. Same page. <clears throat> Feels good to be a Twins homer tonight, just like you. Uh, I know, yeah. I wish it was a little better hitting weather for the Twins' offense. Uh, what are we looking at? I didn't, I didn't see it. At 60, all. sixty degrees. Okay. I mean, it's not bad. Like, they'll be fine. All right. Are we good there? We are good. Okay. Uh, Royals and Cardinals. Royals three point four run implied total. Cardinals four point eight. It's a sixty six percent chance to win for the Cards. Ian Kennedy going for Kansas City. Miles McCullis going for St. Louis. I don't think we're going to have any mustache bets today, but uh, I like McCullis. Um, I'd much rather have McCullis than <clears throat> Grinky or Geo and be, what, $2,100 less than Geo on DK. McCullis has the same price as Geo on FanDuel, so he's not a guy I'm going to have as much of on FanDuel, but on DK, he'll hit my ownership caps. <clears throat> uh, I like the Cardinals quite a bit here. And let's see, they are my fourth most owned stack on DraftKings. I'm not feeling the same way about them on FanDuel. Or am I? I don't know why I just said that. They're my number one stack on FanDuel. (laughs) I don't know why I said that like that. I just kept scrolling. I knew that. I wrote them up. They're on Spotlight Hitters. It's like, it's literally already on the website. I want everything Cardinals tonight, and I want nothing Kansas City. Yeah, well, I'll just get McCullis out of the way. Um, I think he's a good pitcher. I like him, but not against the Royals. He has not had, like, a big strikeout game yet, and I don't think it's coming here. The Royals strike out the least in the MLB against righties this year. Just sort of going back to that, the way they played, like, a couple years ago when they were, like, a World Series caliber team. They just put everything in play, and they're really frustrating to pitch against. So for 9,800... Um, McCullis is not going to make my cut. Um, not targeting any Royals against him, really. I mean, I understand a Mustakis play or something like that, but um, so no Royals for me. Uh, and then Cardinals, yeah, I'm all over them. Kennedy gives up all kinds of hard hits against righties this year, and the Cardinals have a bunch of righty power. Um, so Ozuna is super underpriced. Tommy Pham is priced correctly, I think. Yeah. Um, those are probably my two favorites, but I love Jose Martinez and uh, Fowler and Carpenter, even Jorko as well. Yeah, Carpenter, spotlight hitter for me today. 3,300 on FanDuel, 3,400 on DK with the dual eligibility. You know, mm-hmm. lefty-righty matchup against Ian Kennedy. Uh, I, I can't get enough of him there. 4.8 run implied total. I think Carpenter looks like the best option of the bunch. Um, I'll have everybody here, depending on the site. I'm a lot heavier on Wong on FanDuel, where he's only 2,200. Um, I get a little bit of Francisco Pena, but this isn't the spot where I seem to be grabbing a catcher on DK. I have most of my ownership in that 2, 3, 4, 5 window. I can't quite figure out why it happened the way that it did, but I basically have no Tommy Pham on DK and maxed out Tommy Pham on FanDuel. I can't really wrap my head around it. Oh, that's weird. It's not really a price thing. Well, outfield is super, super deep at the top today Yeah. on DK. So that might be it. Like, you got Judge and Stanton up there. Uh, you got the Twins guys. You got, like, Orioles. And, well, I guess they're not really that expensive. But um, there are a lot of guys up top that you can pay for as far as outfielders go. Yeah, I don't have a single issue with Tommy Pham. Uh, his ownership on FanDuel is what I sort of expected his ownership to be on DK. But for some reason, it's just not breaking that way i don't know if it's just because of like how well the rest of the guys fit because you can get martinez carpenter and jerko at first second third it's not leaving a lot of spots and it's grading out ozuna at 3300 as a much better option than fam so he's just kind of getting pinched because of his price which i don't necessarily have a huge problem with if i if we find out that his ownership is you know pretty high on DraftKings. I'll be okay with being under that if it means that I'm heavier on Ozuna. I think that'd be a fine trade-off. Fam's just been smoking righties. Like, he's 31st 
an average exit velocity against righties over the last month. Um, like Judge, obviously, first, and then you've got some of the bigger like lefties that are in front of Fan, but that's about it. Like He has been smoking everything. So has Ozuna. Ozuna's really hitting the ball a lot better than what he was at the beginning of the season. So that's why I said I like those two yeah. the best, but you're splitting hairs. I think that all these Cardinals make for awesome plays, and they'll have ownership on DK just because they're priced the way they are, but um, like the Twins, uh, if they're going to be substantially higher on than the Twins, then I'll just go all in on the Twins, but um, I like them both. They're like neck and neck for me. Same. Final game. Rockies and Dodgers. Rockies, three-run implied total. Dodgers, 4.1. It's a 63% chance to win for the Dodgers. Um, German Marquez, I shouldn't have said it like that, but I don't care. Rockies is going for the Rockies. Walker Bueller going for the Dodgers. I just, I have no, I have, I have nothing for like my brain trying to say other people's names in different languages. Uh, play a lot of Walker Bueller tonight. He's going to be, would you agree that he's the chalkiest pitcher on the slate? Yeah, oh man, so it, I think it's going to be him or Barrios on on DraftKings. Um, I don't know. I maybe I'm off. Maybe it's going to be Gio or Granky. Um, but Bueller's going to be a top three own pitcher, like no doubt about it. Yeah. Three run implied total for the Rockies. Yeah. People are going to see that. It's the lowest of the slate. Um, we've been looking for a game for him to break out, and I think it's going to be this one. The Rockies are bad against righties. 65 weighted runs created plus against rock, or up against righties on the season. Uh, they're striking out you know, slightly above league average. They're slugging under league average. Their hard hit contact is nowhere near league average. Uh, I think Bueller's going to cruise here, but I also expect him to be pretty highly owned. Um and he's really the only thing that I'm looking at. Uh, I don't want any part of any Rockies bats, and I barely have any of the Dodgers. I don't have them at all on DraftKings, actually. So this game is just Bueller for me. Yeah, man. Like, <sighs> Bueller, so he's a, a little bit confusing to me because he's not getting a ton of swinging strikes and stuff, but um, I think they, they should be coming. He's got pretty good stuff. Uh, I am encouraged that he was pushed to 97 pitches in his last start, even though the start wasn't going great for him. Um, so that was the season high. Uh, he could certainly get over 100 here, which is really nice to see with a guy like Dave Roberts, who pulls guys in the fourth inning and does <laughs> stupid stuff with pinch hitters. So maybe Bueller's got a little bit of a leash here, not like a Kershaw leash, but um, a, a little bit of one. So 9,300, I'm comfortable paying for him. Uh, yeah, in the the matchup is just so good. The Rockies are one of the worst teams against righties. Like the sixty five WRC plus, that is <laughs> that's awful. And yeah, thirty percent K rate for Bueller this year, two seven x FIP. Like it just makes too much sense. He'll probably be the first or second chalkiest pitcher, but definitely somewhere in the top three. Yeah, I, I think he'll end up at the top just because of his price point. Um, Barrios, probably a close second. I just he, I can't get enough of him here. He, he It's just too good of a spot. Um, I'm really anxious to see what we're projecting his ownership at. I would have liked to be above the field, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Do you think he's going to be substantially higher owned than... Uh, you cut out there, so I have no idea who you just named. Do, do you think uh, Bueller's going to be like very much higher owned than Tanaka? Yes. Okay. So, I, I mean, I think Tanaka as a pitcher in general has more upside than Bueller, at least right now. Um, like, I think Tanaka could have double-digit strikeouts against the Rangers if he's got his stuff working. And I don't know that Bueller has that type of ups upside, but... Um, better pitching environment for sure for Bueller, and you're going to pay for that with the ownership, though. So that's why I'd love to knock in tonight. A um, lot riskier spot, but I think if things go right for him, they could go very, very well. And that's not even like me hating on Bueller. I think he's he's in my top three for pitchers for sure. 
Uh, I'm just worried about the ownership now that we're kind of talking it out. Yeah, like uh, <clears throat> I would guess that he's significantly higher than Tanaka. The Rangers line, projected line, a full run higher than the Rockies. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be relevant. Um, the only thing that like pinches that together a little bit is maybe because Tanaka is on the Yankees, there might be some like you know public visual there. But I feel like Tanaka hasn't been super chalky in the past. Like, yeah. I feel like I've been higher on Tanaka than the field has been lately. So I don't Let's know see. how that's going to shake out. I see one game where he was 45% against the Twins. Uh, where are you um, looking at that at? Can you say that out loud right now? What's that? Where are you looking at that right now? Uh, a different site okay. that shall remain unnamed. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, so I, they just list the ownership percentages. I don't um, know. Never mind. I know where you're at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Shit. Some of you sharp <laughs> listeners will, will know where this is, but it, I mean, it's a pretty common site. Yeah. Uh, so I'm seeing like 20% against the Red Sox, 21 against the Angels, 24 against the Reds, Red Sox again. Um, if he's anywhere in that 20 to 30% range, I I love Tanaka. I mean, I love him in general, but uh, this Rangers matchup is really awesome, and I'm hoping the good hitting weather scares people off of him and onto a safer option like Bueller. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I wanted to shake out. I mean, I guess... In theory, I don't really care. I'm going to have a ton of Bueller, and I'm going to have a ton of Tanaka, and I'm going to have a ton of Berrios, one way or the other. So the only thing that I'm going to do is make adjustments around the public. It's mm-hmm. I'm not going to suddenly not have these guys. But if one looks to be significantly higher than the others, then I'll probably pull. Like, if Bueller is somehow, like, double Tanaka, then I'll make sure to have to be a little heavier on Tanaka because I don't think the gap is that big. Right. Um, so really, the way that that shakes out is all going to be based on our expected ownerships, which you should be paying for at awesomeo.com. Yes. <laughs> Pluggy plug you plug. You should. I think that's it. You want to look at some uh, crunches? Yeah, let's look at the crunches. All right, give me two starters. Let's go with the couple of guys we were just talking about. Let's go with well. Let's go with Tanaka Bueller. Let's see what that looks like. All right, I get six lines right off the bat. Stacks of Twins let's Oreo. That out again. Yeah. So those first three are all going to be. This is what's interesting to me about looking at this stuff. Mm. We've got the Orioles, the Cardinals, <clears throat> the Nats, and the Diamondbacks, and all three of these top lines with the top with the same pitchers. Their overall projection is separated by a half point. That's how much variability there is in building out a baseball line and why I'm never just like, oh, I highly recommend this one particular player because I can take four separate teams, mix all of their guys together and get different stacks across the board and still get to like a similar projected total. That's why I like playing so many lines because I can do something like this. It's really hard to just pick one. Like, yeah, I, th- I think I'm going to get more into MMEing, um, especially on slates like these where I like a bunch of different stacks, I like a bunch of different pitchers. So I think also DraftKings, if, if anybody who's listening to this is interested, uh, I think they're running a mini max, it's called, where, um, well, actually, I don't even know if it doesn't show up on mine, I don't think, but uh, it's for like lower volume players and it's a 25 cent entry fee and i think you can enter up to 150 lineups which sometimes i see that and sometimes i don't well i saw them like they sent out an email yesterday but it's not showing up in mine so i must not qualify for it yeah i don't have Uh, it either i probably played too much in hockey to be able to to get into that tournament um which is fine like you should play it if you're interested in trying to mme like josh and like like osmo and some other guys at our site yeah, I mean, like, you can get into, like, even if you just want to play 20 lines on DraftKings, it, you know, you can get 20 into the solo shot to practice something like that. You can do 150 lines of FanDuel quarter entry stuff to practice this sort of stuff. You don't have to have a gigantic outlay uh, to do it. I mean, ultimately, the goal is to build up to get 
you know, to max enter the $6 DraftKings tournament and have, you know, that much in the field mm-hmm. with a $300,000 $300, total prize pool. But you got to build to that. It's not, Nobody just starts with, well, I mean, most people just don't start with a quarter million dollar bankroll to be able to manage this sort of stuff. Uh yeah, you know, you gotta you gotta get there. It's it's like anything else in life. Uh, everyone starts as a beginner some sometimes. So, yep, it's highly recommended in baseball, in my opinion. Just and this first line is like the exact reason why. And we could even rotate out Tanaka and Bueller for Pavetta, Barrios, Barrios and yeah. have even more combinations of very similar stuff. Yeah. So if I end up at a meeting tonight for the first time on the season, which Pretty pretty good chance that I do that. Um, the three like the way I would do it, and I'm <clears throat> I'm probably a little bit more aggressive than you are in terms of like ownership on certain players. Sure. Um, like I would I would just have Barrios, uh, Tanaka, Bueller. Hope two out of the three are at least serviceable, and then just fill in all the stacks that I want around them and do it a bunch of different ways. Yeah, <clears throat> and like you'll be able to get. A ton. Like, if I click that right now, there would be 50 lines within two or three projected <clears throat> fantasy points of each other. And you're going to cover all of the bases that you need. Yeah. And I still could, like, those guys could all pitch well. My bats could all do well. But if you don't have that one lineup that puts it all together, you could still lose. Like, yeah. MME is not a ticket to free money. No. So don't don't get it twisted. Like, it's still hard to win. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. I just, I, I was never that guy. Like for up until the beginning of the NBA season, I was a one line guy on either site. I preferred it. I liked to be able to focus in on it. And Mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, uh, just like doing more research and realizing what I was doing and then seeing Alex talk about it. It was like, okay, I just need to, I need to go the opposite direction. I'm, I'm coming up with all of my own stuff. I need to rely on it a little bit more. And that's been uh, great for me so far. Baseball season has been uh, profitable to date, and I'm hoping that continues. Yeah. Um, I want to look at one other combo on DK that I don't think will be terribly popular. Like, I still get 16% Grinky. That's so crazy. So if we look at Berrios... And Geo, which I don't think will be a terribly large combination. Did you say you cut out Barrios Geo? Oh, okay. Yeah, Barrios and Geo. <clears throat> Twins and Cardinals stack. Oh man, yeah, like that. You can do whatever you want tonight. Yep. I mean, that's one. That's Dozier, Kepler, Escobar, and Garver. You need to get a catcher. That's fine. And then Jose Martinez, Matt Carpenter, Ozuna, and Fam. Man. That's why I think Geo and, and Grinky are going to have higher ownerships. Because of stuff like this, where I'm getting two of my three favorite stacks along with, you know, one of the two most expensive pitchers. And it's not like Berrios is some punt. <laughs> you know, he might be right. the best option of the day. Wow, I didn't know you could do all that. I mean, I guess just looking at the Cardinals and Twins prices, they are really cheap <clears throat> for having a five run total. So they're going to be two of the chalkiest stacks for sure. Um, yeah, and you could probably do that same type of thing with Granky or with like Bueller, Gonzalez or something. Like, there's just a lot of ways to go tonight. So, yeah, the, there <clears throat> are there are enough cheap stacks out there. So if you did do Bueller and Geo or something, you know, like Orioles and Nats, you're getting Trey Turner, you're getting Rendon, you're getting Michael Taylor, three guys we talked about earlier. You're getting the Oriole stack, Mancini, Jones, Scope, Trumbo, like. It's naturally going to bring up Geo and Granky's ownership because you can spend it, unless yeah. you, like you want to just eat two grand. Which I don't necessarily recommend tonight. I don't. It doesn't seem super necessary. Yeah. All righty, that's all I've got, people. Uh, spotlight hitters and pitchers and stacks will absolutely be on the website when you're done listening to this. Uh, hit us up on Twitter if you have any questions. You know, like and subscribe on uh on youtube to this video and this channel uh chris and i'll be back tonight starting at six for live before lock um 
that's really all I got. You got anything to plug? Any hockey? Go, yeah, go dude. Vegas, I guess. Yeah, dude. How about Vegas? Um, Wild. Man, they are. I mean, to win twice in Winnipeg and win four straight against the Jets, like, wow. All right. Um, like, they're for real. So, hockey tonight, Tampa Bay, Washington. Um, the Lightning can close it out. Um, I'll have a showdown article and stuff per usual. Um, so just for fun, just to degenerate, degen some stuff. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. Are you cheering for the lightning or the capitals? In the <clears throat> I'd like to see a game seven. Okay. So capitals. Yeah. yeah, I would like the capitals just to go. I think that'd make for a more interesting story. I don't get the sense that too many people are going to give a shit about Tampa, but at least Washington can pull like a bigger market to a Stanley yeah. cup final. Yeah, I want I want to see Ovechkin. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that guy. So hard not to. I know. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Best of luck tonight, guys, and we'll talk to you again in the morning.